in the headlines of this hour on BTV News. Expectations on the positive impact of the land law. And later on, Vietnam's trade surplus reaches 8.08 .08 billion US dollars in the first quarter of 2024. In a world news, Israel strikes major Gaza hospital. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good afternoon. It is currently 3 p.m. local time and you're tuning into 30 minutes of BTV News. I'm Lin Le with the latest updates. Now on Monday morning, the National Assembly Standing Committee met under the leadership of National Assembly Chairman Vung Ding Hui. They discussed several critical issues to be presented at the upcoming 7th session of the National Assembly. Ten law projects are slated to be presented at this session. Depending on the drafting agency's progress, the National Assembly will consider and comment on five law projects. These include the Law on Notarization, amended, the Law on Trade Unions, amended, the Law on Prevention and Combat of Human Trafficking, amended, and the Law on Management and Use of Weapons, Explosives and Support Tools, amended. The National Assembly Standing Committee will also consider the law on people's air defense and the draft resolution on employment position for its members and those under its management. The General Statistics Office, or GSO, commenced the midterm population and housing census for 2024 nationwide on April the 1st. The full results will be published in November to December, with detailed analytical reports being released the following year. The census will serve as a reference to evaluate the implementation of the Socio-Economic Development Plan for 2021 to 2025. It will also aid in formulating population and housing policies and plans for 2026 to 2030, as well as monitoring the implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, to which the government has committed. The revised land law, which will take effect on January the 1st next year, contains many new points. It is eagerly anticipated by both the public and the business community. A report from the Mekong Delta, a key agricultural production region of the country. This enterprise has connected tens of thousands of hectares of production with numerous farmers. As such, when the land law was revised to permit the expansion of land use limits, the unit's major issue was addressed. Thanks to that, large-scale production will undoubtedly become more convenient. Expanding the land limit in this way is a great catalyst for economic development. We can construct large-scale fields for fruit, seafood, and even rice. This is a significant economic development opportunity for the Mekong Delta and the entire country. A series of new measures seem to be liberating people and agricultural businesses in the Mekong Delta. These not only expand the land limit and regulate it for multi-purpose use, but also contribute to land accumulation for production through agricultural land conversion. The rights to lease, form joint ventures, and receive transfers of rice land have also been broadened to meet practical needs. Businesses are enthusiastically welcoming the positive results of the land law. Changes in the land law will help boost the business community and the economy. Vietnam has one of the highest levels of land fragmentation compared to other countries regionally and globally. This fragmentation often results in land waste. The revised land law aims to eliminate barriers caused by fragmented agricultural land use, enabling Vietnamese agricultural products to integrate into the global value chain. A conference on the sustainable development of the marine farming sector took place in Guangning province on Monday morning. The discussion focused on the implementation of the government's project to develop the aquaculture industry until 2030 with a vision towards 2045. 
The conference drew many businesses and cooperatives. Attendees noted that the government has introduced policies to encourage the creation of seed production areas and concentrated farming areas in Vietnam, demonstrating significant potential. However, to promote sustainable development, it's essential to address issues in policy mechanisms for licensing and allocating sea areas to businesses and fishermen for management, as well as to improve production links. These improvements will attract investment from businesses in not only the aquaculture sector, but also logistics infrastructure. The government aims for the marine farming area to reach 300,000 hectares with an export turnover of 1.8 to 2 billion US dollars by 2045. Vietnam's GDP growth rate for the first quarter of this year was 5.66 percent, marking the highest level for the same period in the past five years. Of note, the industrial and construction sectors have seen a significant acceleration from last year's negative growth. The manufacturing and processing industry remains the primary driver for this economic sector. Importantly, both the inventory index and the number of employees in this field have shown significant improvement, suggesting a trend of expanded production in the upcoming quarters. The workers in this unit are preparing for orders of cinnamon, anise and pepper to fulfill the export schedule to India and Europe. Our company has orders through September. Factories in Europe, which signed orders in January, will deliver from January to September. We have a plan to collect raw materials and agricultural products, depending on the season. The cinnamon crop is from April to June, and the pepper crop is from March to April. Businesses in the textile and garment sector, along with those in agriculture, continuously receive new orders. Hopefully, we can grow by 10% this year compared to last year. Units can sign orders in the first six months of the year, but the price level is not very good, so we are hoping to close orders at better prices. The Ministry of Industry and Trade reported that in the first quarter of this year, the estimated export turnover was 93.06 billion US dollars, a 17% increase from the same period last year. Domestic companies saw an export turnover growth of 26.2%, nearly double that of the foreign invested sector. This demonstrates the efforts of the domestic economic sector to maintain and expand export markets. We are conducting FTA negotiations between Vietnam and the European Free Trade Area. We are also participating in the ASEAN and Canada agreements. The UE market is a gateway to expanding our export markets. The overall export growth target for this year is 6%. The Ministry of Industry and Trade highlighted that as the world market, particularly the European and American markets, is gradually recovering and inventories are falling sharply, it's crucial for Vietnamese businesses to take initiative in reaching out to customers. Vietnam plans to apply trade defense measures or anti-dumping duties on imported goods to protect the domestic manufacturing sector in case of unfair competition. However, the implementation of these measures needs to be seriously considered, too, for sustainable application in individual cases. For instance, domestic production of steel only meets about 30% of the demand, while the remaining 70% is imported. Faced with proposals to impose anti-dumping duties on imported steel materials, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and relevant agencies are carefully studying the negative impacts of the measures on this industry. The company has to spend 20 million dong to purchase each ton of finished rolled steel. This price has been stable for the past year. However, the company is concerned that production costs will soar if hot rolled steel imports are subjected to trade defense taxes. We assume that applying a protective tax of 10%, for example, would lead to a 7% increase in the selling price of our output to customers. This significantly affects the contracts we have already signed. According to a report by the Vietnam Steel Association, Vietnam needs about 11 million tons of hot rolled steel annually to meet its production needs. However, over 7 million tons of this material needs to be imported each year. Therefore, imposing trade defense taxes could jeopardize the steel industry's production and export competitiveness. Our export products will face double anti-dumping duties, one in Vietnam on raw materials and another in the exporting country on the finished product. 
Consequently, our finished products cannot compete with those of other countries. Regarding this matter, a representative from the Ministry of Industry and Trade stated that assessment and initiation of investigations must be carried out within a year before reporting to the Ministry's board for a decision on whether to investigate the case. The Trade Remedies Authority will conduct assessments and gather complete data as required by the WTO and foreign trade management laws. We must fully comply with these issues during the investigation process. Excessive use of these measures can drive up domestic prices and the selling prices of domestic products. Therefore, the government also needs to exert pressure on companies in this industry to improve technological capabilities, reduce production costs. According to the Trade Remedies Authority, steel is one of the most frequently targeted products of trade defense measures worldwide. Seven out of 670 cases are in Vietnam alone. However, the imposition of trade defense measures is only considered when harm is detected in the domestic steel industry. On Monday morning, Vian Direct Securities joint stock company officially reconnected to the stock exchange trading system after a period of uh, troubleshooting due to a cyber attack. On the first day of resumed trading, customers could access their accounts and perform underlying transactions, warrant transactions, and derivative transactions via the DStock and VNDirect applications. VNDirect also advised traders to contact the customer service center hotlines for other products and services if required. However, many investors reported difficulties accessing VNDirect's websites and claimed the system was unstable. And before we move on, let's have a look at the exchange rate between the Vietnam dong and some world currencies in today's market. Coming up next on VTV News, cashless payment methods witness significant growth. And investing in technology to preserve and promote traditional crafts. Welcome back to VTV News Live. Now intense heat waves are set to expand across the northern region, covering areas from Tenghua to Fuyin provinces. The highest temperatures are expected in Sunla, Hua Bing, Niet Mien, Lai Chau, and Tenghua Fuyin districts, with temperatures during Monday's noon and afternoon ranging from 36 to 38 degrees Celsius, and some places exceeding 39 degrees Celsius. Lao Cai Yen Bai and the northeast region, including Hanoi, are projected to have the highest temperatures on Monday ranging between 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. This heat wave is considered unusual, arriving more than a month and a half earlier than expected. Meanwhile, the southern region is also experiencing high temperatures between 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. The intense heat is expected to persist for many more days, increasing the risk of fires and explosions in residential areas, forest fires and heat strokes. Vietnam has added three more dry ports, as announced by the Ministry of Transport, namely Thanh Phuc Dry Port, Nam Bing Vu Dry Port Phase 1, and Phu Mi Dry Port Phase 1. Thanh Phuc Dry Port opens a trade route between Bing Dương and other provinces and cities nationwide. Phu Mi Dry Port Phase 1 will serve as a connection between waterways and seaports, as well as areas like Phu Mi 3 Industrial Park. Nam Ding Vu Dry Port Phase 1 will connect industrial parks, logistics centers, and other seaports of Haiphong. It will also act as a transport hub for goods being delivered domestically and internationally. Currently, Vietnam has a total of 14 dry ports. Vietnam is experiencing a rapid growth in modern payment methods, such as cashless and e-commerce payments. Among these, QR codes payment stands out. It's gaining popularity and is widely used, as evidenced by the prevalence of QR codes. This method is expected to further strengthen with the introduction of multifunctional QR codes later this year. 
At a local market in a northern province, QR codes are displayed at the checkout counter of a small shop. Customers no longer need to carry wallets for shopping, all they need is a smartphone. With a banking payment application on their smartphone, they are ready to shop. Shopping is much more convenient with QR codes. I can pay for items without fear of losing money. For sellers like us, the QR code payment method has become a great assistant. In the past, I had to carry cash while importing products from other localities. Miscalculations were inevitable. Now, I can quickly pay for products. As for my customers, the vast majority of them pay by QR codes. Payments are made so quickly that I have time to serve other customers. The State Bank of Vietnam has released data confirming that the number of QR code payments in Vietnam reached nearly 183 million transactions by the end of 2023. This represents an increase of more than 170% in quantity and over 74% in value compared to the previous year. I find payment by QR code to be very convenient. I don't have to carry cash or cards anymore. The only thing I need is a phone and an internet connection. That is a great benefit when using the service. Customers mostly use cashless payment methods now. I see only a few of them paying in cash. These methods facilitate quick payments, and we can check for payment just as quickly. The State Bank of Vietnam projections indicate substantial growth in cashless payments by 2024. In January, payment transactions using QR codes saw an increase of 893% in quantity and over 1,000% in value compared to the same period the previous year. The Department of Information Security, a part of the Ministry of Information and Communications, has noted an increase in cyber attacks, particularly those involving ransomware. The department has urged ministries, branches, localities, corporations, state-owned enterprises, financial institutions, banks and businesses to review and bolster their cyber attack prevention measures. That is to ensure the safety of all information systems, prioritizing monitoring and early warning solutions. The deadline for this initiative is April the 15th. Traditional craft facilities primarily employ older individuals with many years of professional experience. The traditional production method, however, results in low productivity and environmental pollution. To preserve and develop traditional crafts, several localities like Bari of Untau are assisting residents in investing in innovative production machinery and equipment. Over a year ago, Hana's family received support from the Rural Development Department to invest in machinery and equipment. This included items like an electric furnace and mill. The introduction of these new production machines has helped to reduce dust from the manufacturing process and increase productivity. The electric kiln is more hygienic and does not expose us to any dust or smoke like in the past. Its productivity is twice that of the rice husk kiln. The electric mill is also faster. The wineries in Hoa Long commune receive local support in the form of impurity filters and winemaking kitchens. In the past, there was no storage space for 10 wine bottles, but today, thanks to this house, I can produce more wine. The second thing is this filter. There are some discerning customers who require the wine to be free of natural impurities. In the future, Ba Ria Vung Tao province plans to recognize for new traditional occupations. We provide support for infrastructure construction and environmental protection. Secondly, we invest in machinery and equipment, not exceeding 21,000 US dollars per facility, using the provincial budget. The goal of this initiative is to preserve and develop traditional professions, promote communal products, create job opportunities, increase residents' income, and contribute to the development of new rural areas. Many localities in Vietnam are moving towards the development of organic agriculture. Taking advantage of nature, climate and soil, farmers are proactively changing their methods by applying modern technology and organic production. This results in added value for their products and attracts more consumers. Join us as we delve into this story in Dong Nai province. 
The Tan True brand's Orangello variety has established its own geographical indications. These fruits are organically grown. In addition, local farmers have joined cooperative groups to secure better selling prices. Each region has different soil conditions. Tan Tru is blessed with the alluvial soils of the Dong Nai River system. These soil conditions are suitable for Orangello. If this variety is planted in other places, it will still grow, but it will be less productive and efficient. Many renowned fruit brands are the joint creation of local farmers and businesses. They have adopted a new method for trademark registration and trade protection. As a result, these farmers collaborate to guarantee large-scale organic production safely. They refrain from using chemical fertilizers that could damage the soil. Farmers associations and unions create a sales chain for local products. A community tourism village will be established for farmers to promote their products, aiming to increase their income. We have different plans that are suitable for each type of soil, plant, and animal. This model will be applied to all communes in the province. The province's agriculture sector is notable for its use of natural advantages to establish numerous typical agricultural models. Across the province, there are 80 organic production models under construction. These span nearly 1,500 hectares of crops and include 23,700 livestock. Coming up next on VTV News. Israel strikes major Gaza hospital. And later on, Russian investigative committee releases initial testimonies of suspects. Moving on to our world news, at least four Palestinians were killed and 17 others were wounded on Sunday in an Israeli bombing on tents inside the al Askab hospital in the central Gaza Strip. The eyewitnesses reported to the press that a drone fired at least one missile at tents housing displaced persons and journalists in the courtyard of the Al-Aqsa hospital in a city of the central region in Gaza. The Israel Defense Forces announced that an Israeli Air Force aircraft struck an operational Islamic Jihad command center positioned in the courtyard of the hospital, adding that the hospital building was not damaged and its function was not affected. The Russian investigative committee released initial testimonies on Sunday regarding the mastermind behind the Moscow terrorist attack on March the 22nd. The committee found evidence suggesting that the terrorists involved in the Moscow concert hall attack intended to cross into Ukraine to receive their reward. A man who used a pseudonym assisted in coordinating the terrorists' actions during the preparation phase and after the attack on the concert venue, using audio messages sent via telegram. The terrorist group Islamic State Khorasan admitted responsibility for the attack, a claim affirmed by both the U.S. and the European Union. Ukraine, however, denied any involvement in this incident. China's manufacturing industry activity rebounded in March after five consecutive months of contractions, surpassing analysts' expectations, according to data released Sunday by the National Statistics Office. The Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, stood at 50.8 points in March, 1.7 units higher than February's record, marking the highest rate since March 2023. This figure also surpasses analysts' forecasts, who predicted a sixth consecutive month of decline with a near-rebound PMI of approximately 49.9 points. The office attributes this increase in recovery in production following the Lunar New Year holiday, the country's primary festive period. They also highlighted the first positive mark in recent months in the PMI of small companies. The advent of the Internet and information technology has simplified news updates. Now a smartphone and Internet connection bring the entire world into your hands. As a result, traditional newspapers are under significant pressure. That is evident in Italy, where sales of traditional paper newspapers have declined in recent years, leading to the closure of many newsstands. Fabiano Pompei begins his sales day by opening the iron door of his store, 
which now primarily sells books, not newspapers. His family started a newsstand near St. John Lateran in Rome in 1948, which used to be a thriving business. However, the recent decline in newspaper sales has compelled Pompeii, like thousands of other newsstand owners across the country, to either close their businesses or switch to selling different products. When sales are poor or even at a loss, the only option is to close the store or start another business, even though it's very painful. Every night, I dream about my newsstand because it's always in my heart. Italy's statistics agency reveals that two-thirds of the country's newsstands have shut down over the past 20 years. Particularly, 2,700 newsstands have closed in the last four years alone. Presently, only approximately 12,000 newsstands remain operational. The main cause of this crisis is the significant decrease in newspaper sales, which constitute the majority of a newsstand's revenue. In 2004, newsstands sold around 9.5 million newspapers daily. As of this January, daily sales have been further reduced to only 950,000. Newspaper sales have significantly dropped. I believe that within the next 20 years, there will be no more printed newspapers. My father's generation has passed, and perhaps the next generation will no longer read newspapers. For many locals and newsstand owners, these cement newsstands are more than just places to sell newspapers. They serve as community hubs, fostering discussions on politics, football, and social issues. It's not just about buying newspapers, it's also about how people open up and share with each other about everything. People come here not just to pick up the newspaper and leave, but they often stop and chat. For example, today is Monday, we usually talk about football and sports. In an attempt to halt newsstand closures, the Italian government has offered incentives of approximately 2,000 euros to each newsstand owner this year. However, these incentives offer only short-term relief for the owners and do not address the long-term trend. Up next, let's have a look at the weather forecast for Vietnam and other locations in the world. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our website or YouTube channel or download a mobile app VTV Go for more. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.